look at this. Indonesia as the host for IFSC Climbing World Cup 2022. Hmm, how about that? You know what, I've got to try this sport. It looks amazing, it looks like so much fun, and I love exercise, but I don't want to do this alone. Ah, see what Stray is up to. Hello, Stray. Hey, it's me. Where are you? Are you at the beach? Huh? I was going to ask you to come do a little bit of climbing with me, but I guess not in the plans for you. I'm going to go anyway, but uh, yeah, enjoy yourself out there. As always, bye Stray. Hey everyone, it's me again, Paul Palali, coming back at you for another episode of Buddy Talk. I have a very special one lined up just for you. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, Jakarta and Indonesia as a whole was just the host for the IFSC 2022 Climbing World Cup for the very first time here in our country. So let's do a little bit of climbing today and find out what it's all about. Let's go. Dian. Halo. 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 Paul. Dian. Dari Buddy Talk. So, okay. uh, kita sudah ada di Climb On nih ya. Yeah. Ini uh, apa aja sih fasilitasnya yang tersedia di sini? Oke, okay, di sini adalah indoor climbing gym. Oke. Okay. Jadi tempat untuk memanjat indoor. Jadi tidak perlu kehujanan atau kepanasan ya. I'm in the right <laughs> Jadi place. di sini aman banget untuk latihan. Okay. Dan fasilitas yang di sini tuh kita ada boulder. Okay. Ada juga yang lead climbing. I see. Gitu. Nah, kayaknya itu yang saya pengen coba. Nih. Boleh. Tapi untuk orang beginner seperti saya, mm -hmm. bisa? Bisa, bisa Sama banget. Oke, okay, kita ke sana dulu ya. Oke, okay, sip. Alright, oke, okay, let's get this party started. Oke, okay. gimana Mbak Dian? Lumayan kan tadi ke oh. atas. Oh, hi. well done. Lian <laughs> Wahid, hi, how are you? Well done, Thank well you done. So you watch it. I did, I okay. did. I've been looking for you actually. Actually, that's right. Since I've heard that. Two weeks ago, three oh. weeks ago. Yes. We've been wanting you to be part of the World I Cup. I wish I could. As you can see, I'm preparing for the next one. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, the IFSC uh, Climbing World Cup. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. That has come first and time gone. ever. First time Happen. ever in, in Indonesia. In Indonesia yeah. So this is the first time our Indonesian climbers were able to perform in front of yes. a home crowd. Home trip, yes. How was that for them? Oh, fantastic. I mean it just for me I saw I mean I'm, I'm very close to our athletes, right? And um, I've seen them perform in, in, in different uh, countries. Okay. And uh, I think being able to perform in front of their loved ones mm -hmm. in a way, you know, because some of the parents were here. Right. So it was such a, as a probably a, a surge of um, uh, motivation, motivation for them. Inspiration motivation, for them, inspiration, yeah. inspiration for them. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and we did get, uh, we managed to uh, nab the gold medal, the yes, silver medal for the speed, for the, uh, for the male category. Correct. And also for, for the first time ever, in the lead category, we've got a, uh, our athlete actually went through the final. Oh wow, that's first right, time. that's first right. Time. Correct, and he was. I saw the interview in as well. Years, so years. excited. It's probably like more than <laughs> 20 years. Wow. We've never been able to send our uh, okay. athletes to. So to it certainly makes so a difference. So let's let's rewind a little bit. Mm. How did your journey with climbing uh, begin? <laughs> How did this all start? Well, it's it's kind of funny because I didn't start as a. I'm not a climber, okay. so I help with the managing of the sports in Indonesia, you know, with the federations and the athletes, and etc. But my husband was the former chairperson of the federation, oh, so I he's see. the one who roped me in, in okay. a way, you know. Right. So and um, you know, he um, he moved on to 
other things and uh, but you know the the um, we've got all these offices regional offices mm -hmm. and you know guys who manage the original offices they said would you like to continue okay became uh, the the president we call it the president yeah why not you know i fell in love with the with that's the what i was going to say you have to be passionate <laughs> about something for you to be able to run it for years now already so. i fell in love with the sports i fell oh, in love wow. with the athletes i fell in love with the community right and so here i am what so, uh what is the target for the, you for of course the end game ahead. the immediate end game of course is the olympics yes in paris all right so we hope that we would get medals hopefully at least uh you know top three we've got the talent for yeah. it that's for sure so uh Cross that, our fingers and yeah. of course we would like to ask for support and yes. for sure and well pray. fan support you certainly <laughs> have it and the qualifiers will take place next year correct next year all right and at the end of the year look out for that one guys yes all right so listen so, i've got uh, a couple of surprises for you so ah. i'm going to ask uh there you go Ooh, part I of the production surprises. team to bring it here okay. so it's going to be in order we've got a few of them so we we'll, want Ooh. you to open them on cam don't worry they're not uh they're not no plastic snakes, snakes, snakes that's no. going to jump out at you no okay. no they're not plastic here snakes i can handle but what, ah. is this what is it what is this okay hold it up perhaps for the camera right okay all right. so you recognize the logo obviously this is a Spotify logo. Yeah. So uh, apparently you created oh. a song. <laughs> you get it now? All right. Okay. So you created yes. a song. Tell us about it. It has something to do with what we're doing here as well. Did not know you had a musical side. Well, I didn't know that either <laughs> okay. until last year. <laughs> okay. So tell during us about the, this thing COVID. that you released on, uh, on, on Spotify. Well, uh, uh, during COVID, uh, we actually moved from Jakarta. We live in Jakarta, okay. but then we moved to Jogja for a while because mm -hmm. our house was uh, under renovation okay. in Jakarta. So we hang out with so many musicians, artists in Jogja sure. because there's so many talents sure. there. And so we hang out with them almost, you know, like three times a week. And okay. So sort of like, like, you know, like wrap off on me, <laughs> okay. you know. Uh, and then we started, instead of just singing, we started making music like creating wow. songs writing songs together okay. and so uh and it was just for fun you know it's nothing it's just a hobby yeah but then uh, my husband you know being the person that he is dragged me into the studio <laughs> music studio and uh basically you know dragged me into recording okay the music there right. recording the songs there and then behind my back, he released it in Spotify. Oh, you didn't know? I didn't know that. Oh. I didn't know that. I would, I'd be too embarrassed. You know, <laughs> okay. I'd be too embarrassed. I'm, I'm, I'm not. You know, I don't. And it's I used... don't think I have the talent, but it's just uh, you know for fun. Right. Okay. And it's used as a theme song, as the. Well, yes. Okay. Well, when we, when we recorded that, it was just with the thought that okay, it's okay. Well, let's just record it. Mm -hmm. You know, let's see. For fun. Uh, whether we could use it for something, okay. you know, for anything at all. And then uh, we've got a uh, like a welcoming dinner mm -hmm. for the athletes, and then the uh, organizer play that. <laughs> We're still without your knowledge. And, <laughs> and then the, you know some people said, yeah, especially the international audience, oh, not bad. Yeah. You know, why don't you use it as a theme song? Oh, so it was okay. other people's idea to use that. Yeah, I'm too. I'm too. That's nice. I'm too shy. <laughs> <laughs> so your first. We've got another surprise for you here. All right, open this one. This one might have plastic oh, okay. snakes. No, I'm okay, just kidding. Okay, okay. None of them have it. Right. Okay. Ah. Okay. okay. So this is a sketchbook. Yes. Along okay. with a uh, pencil and an eraser. So apparently you have this uh, <laughs> a knack of sketching. You have yes, a hobby. Yes, I love sketching. Okay, I love well, sketching. Well, tell, tell me a little bit about it. When did this begin? Well, I did, um, my, as my undergrad, I okay. actually did a um, communication, visual communication, okay. graphic design. Okay. And I just love sketching. Oh. And then I, when I accompanied my father, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes I get bored and I started sketching people. Okay. All this, you know, head of so state. So apparently I heard when, when he used to go to meetings, you would just sketch. Well, like when what? I got bored, when I got okay. really bored and you know, some of these sometimes meetings. in official <laughs> meetings, you know, <laughs> right. you, you know beforehand, you know, sure. the things that they're going to say and it's just, Official lines, okay. you know. I'm not gonna lie about that. Yeah, it gets boring sometimes, sure. you know, because you know anyway. Yeah, what is being talked about, and so, you know, to stop me from running off. You brought I would, in your little I would, yeah, sketchbook. yeah, my sketchbook and whatever is in my in my purse, you know, and then. What was uh, the most memorable? Do you have one that you re totally remember because something funny happened or something during it? <laughs> I did President Clinton. Really? I did uh, Hugo Chavez. Okay. Yeah, the late Hugo Chavez. Wow. I did uh, 
President Obuchi, uh, Jacques Chirac. Did any of I them did... ever want to see what you were sketching? Yeah, actually, yeah. I gave I gave my sketch to Aww. President Clinton. I gave um, uh, Prime Minister Obuchi of Japan my sketch, okay. and uh, he actually uh, put it in his office. That's apparently. So cool. So I think we still have a long way to go when it comes to empowering uh, women or gender equality. Um, most recently there was a case that uh, was all over social media, all over the news in regards to a very famous Indonesian uh, dangdut singer yeah. who is currently going through a case uh, in regards to abuse and domestic violence. What are your thoughts on this whenever you hear of news like this? I mean it is sad to hear but it is still happening, it's still out there. Well it's uh, the tip of the iceberg because uh, you know we still see all these cases happening and she's a, a, a public figure but she's actually quite empowered economically sure. yeah. but she still got she still got that kind of treatment mm -hmm. and I think so this is this is a big uh, a big problem that we need to be solved and it's not just about uh, you know it's not just about uh, anyone can it, this can happen to mm -hmm. anyone mm -hmm. regardless of your background regardless of your educational level, regardless of your economic uh, condition as well. Yeah. So, and uh, the data in Indonesia actually suggests that uh, around 6% of women actually experience this kind of uh, wow. uh, domestic violence. 6% of all women? Yes, of women in Indonesia. Yeah, that is But it's actually idea. much lower than the world uh, world's really? data, yeah, from the UN yeah. Women, for example. Yeah. So Any percent is still too many if absolutely. you think about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, obviously the laws are changing, so hopefully the mindset of the people that needs to change will change along with it. And but we, you know, I'm quite encouraged by the reaction of the people, of the society. That's true. They actually give her support. They, they, uh, they give her support to not to accept this as a reality of mm -hmm. her marriage, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and to walk away from this yeah. and, and to take actions yeah. about this. I mean, in, in many cases, people, you know, women, uh, we're asked to just be quiet just about be quiet it, to accept and it, and it. this is a way to heaven, mm -hmm. you know, to accept it as a, as a reality and, yeah. and uh, you know, as a, in fact, as a sign of piety, as, a, as an obedient mm -hmm. wife, you know, mm -hmm. as a symbol of that. And yeah. so you just have to grin and bear it, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of attitude in our society. So it's good. I'm not saying that this is, this is good. It's good that, that it is, happened, but... This is but a sign that, that you know we can take something out yes. of this case, yes. you know, and hopefully we will we can educate the uh, society more. How do you, you yourself in your own household implement this way of thinking, this proper way of thinking about gender equality and how people should be treated fairly? Well, I've got three daughters. Yes, correct. So I do have uh, the obligation yeah. to show them, you know, that they are uh, worthy, you know, that they are. Um, you know, that they're enough, you know, as individuals and they need to be treated nicely, mm -hmm. kindly, respectfully by their partners later. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is by me and my husband actually mm -hmm. exhibiting a respectful and, uh, you know, very loving relationship in front of them so that show they will example. show by example. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, children, they absorb mm -hmm. from their uh, surroundings, you know, they learn from what their parents uh, it's true. The actions, you know, the actions of the parents. Uh, absolutely. Hey, listen, I want to see your drawing. Where not, have you gone so far? Not yet done. Well, it's oh, still. Oh, they say the eyes are the windows to the soul. Yeah. So, well. not bad okay. at all. Oh, my well, goodness. Look at that. First time, first time. Okay, we let's should have, do a proper, uh, a proper sit down with you and the sketch it properly. Look at that. Hi, guys. Welcome to another <laughs> episode of Buddy Talk. However, we got to take a short teaser. Don't go anywhere. We have more with Boo Yeni Wahid when we return. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, still here on Buddy Talk with me alongside Buyeni Wahid and I'm so glad that I'm out of my climbing shoes now. I was not aware <laughs> that bit, climbing shoes yes. have to be like a little smaller yes, than your shoe yes. size. Snug, so, yeah. Whew, it's very comforting. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more. We've talked a lot about climbing and uh, women's rights. I want to touch on a little bit more in regards to uh, women's rights because uh, recently in Iran there was mm. a protester who was shot for wearing uh, her hijab. What's your take on this? 
Well, you know, hijab has always been a contentious issue in, in, in Islam, and mm -hmm. some people actually took, took a very... Excuse me, she was not wearing her hijab. She was not wearing hijab, and that's the reason why. She was, hijab, hijab, she was why. supposed to be wearing yeah. it, correct. And this is, uh, in Iran, of course, the regime, as we all know, is right. uh, quite a conservative regime, so they took a big offense in, in what she's, she did, right? Right. Uh, but on the issue of hijab itself, I mean, it is a contentious issue. I mean, some, some people says it, it is obligatory in Islam. Some actually say, some, some ulama says, no, it's not obligatory because mm -hmm. there's no uh, penance when you don't wear that. Right. So it's always been like that for quite some time. My sisters, my, I've got two younger sisters. They don't wear hijab. Mm -hmm. I wear them. Uh, even though it's my a, own way, my mm -hmm. own style, you know, not fully covered. Mm -hmm. and, some Muslims regard me as being not pious enough. Right, you know, which right. I can take. It's personal it doesn't choice, matter. right? Well, you know, um, women in Nusantara, mm -hmm. this part of Indonesia, you know, uh, they used to wear the hijab like me, mm -hmm. you know, the way I've covered, and you know, sometimes just slip off there. Loosely, yeah. They're loosely, very mm -hmm. loosely, and it's you know, no one, no one actually told them that they're not pious women. They're not Muslim right. enough. But now we're actually seeing an emergence of a a rather conservative stream of thoughts in Islam, mm -hmm. which is quite dominating. Mm -hmm. And they've been very aggressive in campaigning for uh, the use of hijab. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, to the level of, of, of uh, forcing women to wear them. Right. What are your Afghanistan? thoughts about how uh, Muslim women should approach this in order for them to be able to keep up with modern times because modern life is not like that anymore. If you well, it's not it. Islam. Right. It's whatever it is. It is. It is. Sometimes there's a political dictate of that society, of that community. There's an agenda. Or it's a political agenda. Mm, yeah, I guess it's just certain communities and several groups that are, I guess, not in line with the you real know. teachings of Islam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I guess some people yeah. do lose their way. Okay, um, it's time for us to have a little a little game. It's called rapid question. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say okay. something. I'm gonna okay. say a word or a name, and you're just gonna not think and just just tell me oh, the no. first thing that pops into your oh, mind. Oh God! Okay. I'm gonna start off with an easy one. I know. Hijab. Not compulsory. Okay, I like that. Mm. Nice. Okay, so people should just if you want to wear one, go ahead. No one should judge you no. either way. No. Okay. Next one, Sinta Nuria. A, a real role model for me. Really? Yeah. When you were yeah. ever since you were little. Well, especially now that I become a mother myself, oh, okay. I recognize you know all the things that she did for us, and I recognize that oh, this, this those are not easy things yeah. that she did, and but she did manage to do that, and she prof in a way she provided for the family along with my dad. Mm. My dad was more in an activist type, so sure. sometimes he couldn't really bring anything home and my mom was always there to support the kids. And so she did like two roles in a way. Absolutely, domestic and also um, uh, she breadwinner as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, That's so amazing. she's a very determined lady and she's, um, she's never angry at us. Okay. And it's, it's quite funny because it's, well, not funny, but uh, she believes that if she's angry at her children, mm -hmm. God will be angry at us. Ah, oh, okay. Can you imagine the depth of that? Yeah. It's and she doesn't want God to be angry at us. Really? So she okay. would rather oh, not she, be angry at God us. Oh, she will be angry at you guys. At the, if she at got the children. Angry. If she got angry at oh, the children, wow. the God will be angry at the children. I wish somebody told this to my mom when I was growing up. <laughs> so she wouldn't get too angry at <laughs> well, me all the time. No, I mean, she still gets angry, <laughs> but she doesn't not. You know, sometimes you can. You can be very, very angry yeah. that you take it out on the children, you know? Right. Like a very... It happens sometimes. It, get, yeah. it gets the best of us. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Guilty as well. Okay, last one. Uh, women as leaders. The dictate of time, of our time now. Mm. Yes, very yeah. much so. Yeah. Well said. Um, who is your favorite uh, or a couple of your favorite uh, leaders, women leaders out there? Anyway. Women leaders? Yes. Women leaders. Well, uh, women leaders, well, uh, I like uh, Hillary Clinton. Okay. I like the uh, current vice president. Kamala Harris. Uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, who else? Uh, Margaret Thatcher. Mm, good one. It's very tough. Yes. All these tough iron, ladies. The iron, lady. <laughs> iron ladies. Iron yeah, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, she took um, hard decisions. 
She it's did. not easy she you did. know to make all those hard I mean people can criticize the decisions mm -hmm. but the fact that she took the decision she, she took the risk she mm -hmm. took uh, you know the hard the hard job of making that tough decision yeah. this is something that I really admire so um, let's talk a little bit about um, your dad my dad okay so uh, as uh, he was one of the more prominent figures uh, during his time in office um, what what sort of things did you learn from him? Ah, uh, service to the people beyond our own interest, beyond our own uh, needs. Okay. So he's, he's really, he's a man who would give himself for others. This is a man who would just, he's like, he's like the ocean. Whatever you dump into that ocean, he would just take it and then he would gladly give back beautiful things. Okay. You know, like the oceans give us fish, all kinds of products, you know, sea products and all that. And But, you know, we just dump all these garbages into the sea, but we still Good get all bad. these beautiful things in return. Mm -hmm. So my dad is like that. Okay. It's like the ocean for me. So this is something that is taught to us, you know, from, from when we were very little, you know, our parents would tell us all these stories about, you know, how your great-grandfather actually did this for this country. Okay. They took all these sufferings for this country. And so, you know, we've it's been ingrained in our heads yeah. since... All the way know, down the line. Exactly, yeah. But, uh, most fond memory? Of my dad. Mm -hmm. Me sitting on his lap in the 80s, and he's a bit chubby, so his <laughs> tummy has always been very, you know, it's very soft and very comfortable. <laughs> What do, what do you what, what would you say what do you think if Gustur was still here yeah. what do you think his take would be in regards to the political situation that Indonesia is currently in now I think it would be very sad to see all these you know the oligarchs that is controlling this this, this, <laughs> this country to see all these um, violations of uh, of the rules of law, of corruptions level. That's true. Uh, you know, he's someone that, of course, you know, he, he and discrimination that still happen, still happening. Uh, you know, uh, intolerant acts that still practiced by some groups in our society. Uh, you know, he, of course, we all know that he, he fought for uh, equality for all Mm -hmm. for all uh, citizens in Indonesia, regardless of the race and, and, and uh, belief. Okay, we have, um, since we're talking about family here, I have my final buddy challenge for you. Oh. The, uh, I don't know if you're aware, I interviewed your sisters before. Right. We were trying to get all three of you, but you were, I, don't, I can't really remember, you weren't, you weren't available. So okay, okay. I was able to talk to them and I asked them a bunch of questions. Right. Now I'm going to ask you those same questions and we're going to try to line up your answers later. Oh, I can't no. remember exactly how they answered, <laughs> but we're going to see how well they match. But we would like to know about you, the three of you together, okay. in comparison to these questions. So, who would you say is the most forgetful? In the family, yeah, I think it would be me. Maybe you. <laughs> I think they. I think they said you. I'm not sure. This, We're gonna do a check. We're gonna do a fact check. Yes. <laughs> All right. Who likes to eat the most? Whose hobby is like oh, culinary? We call it right. Like my who? youngest sister Inaya. Inaya is a yes. favorite to eat. She's a very good cook as well. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Right, there you go. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. Works out well then. Who would you say is the most sensitive or sentimental? Ah, uh, I could fall into that category, but, okay. but I think all of us are. <laughs> okay. You think it's all even then? All even, right. yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah. And Ooh. hot tempered as well. Okay. Not just sensitive, <laughs> really? but hot tempered. Oh, the other being way from, as well. Being, being from East Java. Ah. We're East Javanese, we're very, you know, we flare up quite uh, easily. Really? You know, we just, you know, and, and but then that's it. After okay. that, everything's uh, everything's settled peace. and with the peace. <laughs> yeah. Happiness. Yeah, yeah, right. My last question for you is, uh, <laughs> what are your hopes for uh, 2024 real quick before we end things? 2024, I really hope that things remain stable, no okay. matter what happens, yes. you know, and whether we have the elections or, or who will run for the elections, mm -hmm. but things remain, uh, you know, stable, that we will elect, Indonesia will elect a good leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that uh, I think President Jokowi has been doing quite well, you know, in, in governing this country and I hope that whoever will continue, will continue some of the policies, the Me good too. policies. That Me is, too. Me yeah. too. It's been a good run, so uh, exactly. how about you personally? 
Any Me? personal, yeah, any personal goals for 2024? I don't know. I mean, um, I mean, people ask me these questions all the time. You know, whether I will join politics again in mm. a way. Um, I've been waiting for my time. You know, not waiting, but I've been taking my time because my kids are still uh, oh, yeah, small. Course. So I wanted to take some time off to focus more on them. But I think 2024 might be a um, a uh, a step for me to start going back fully into politics, oh, nice. in whatever capacity, in whatever sure. uh, role that I'm going to play. But yeah. maybe, maybe then but I can the start venturing into yeah. politics again. In the meantime, enjoy your time at home with the kids. It's nothing like it. I love it too as well. Yeah. Tell my producer I need more time off so I can <laughs> hang out with my kids. Thank you we so much. We should do play dates together. Yes, we should. Yes, yeah. we have rules. We can bring them here, make yeah. them climb, burn off some energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> All yeah. right. Good luck. Thank, uh, thank you so much for your time. Good luck with everything. I can't wait uh, for next year's Asian uh, qualifiers for us for the uh, for the Olympics. Yeah. Good luck with that. You need to be there. Huh? I will. All right. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. That's been uh, this episode of Buddy Talk. Thank you guys so much, buddies, for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in every. Saturday and Sunday night at 8 p.m. only on Sid Today. My name is Paul Pallelli signing off for now. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.